Let us look at this example quickly. Now in this example here, just know that um, it has part of issuing shares and part of it will be asked buying back the shares. Now in this example, they say the following information relates to Greystone Limited and the authorized share capital is 700,000 ordinary shares. Extract from the balances and totals after adjustments have been made. So we are given ordinary share capital. Um, it's the balance that is given to us was on the 1st of March, 2017. So the share capital on the 1st of March, 2017 was 5 million. 848,000. So we don't know where that 5,848,000 comes from because we are not given how many shares were issued at the beginning of the year. So we'll have to read additional information to figure that out. And they said share capital, um, and they just told us there that on 1 March 2017, which is the beginning of the financial year. 1 March 2017 is the beginning of the financial year. Share capital on that date was 5,848,000. But here they're telling us that 70% of authorized share capital was in issue on 1 March 2017, meaning that the 70% of authorized shares was issued and we got 5,848,000 by issuing um, that 70%. And we will have to calculate 70% of 700,000 because we have 700,000 authorized shares. And then it says on 1 November 2017, we issued additional shares worth 160,000. So our share capital will go up. Um, it will go up by 11,51 multiplied by 160,000. And it means that we will have issued more shares now. Okay. And then on the 19th of February 2018, the company repurchased. So we bought back 50,000 ordinary shares from the estate of G. Gallagher. It was decided to offer uh, the purchase price of 16 rand per share. The offer was accepted by the estate of G. Gallagher and the money was paid from the bank account of the company. So we offered to purchase them at um, 16 rand per share. Note that that was the market value on the 19th of February. So it's not the original price. Remember I said your ordinary share capital will increase at cost price and it will decrease at cost price. To record this, we'll start with authorized shares, which was 700,000. And the next step or the second part will be issued shares. Issued shares, we didn't have the number of shares issued at the beginning of the year. We had to calculate it. They told us that only 70% of authorized shares was issued at the beginning of the year, meaning that 490,000 shares were issued at the beginning of the year. And for issuing 490,000 shares, we raised a share capital amount worth 5,848,000. And then we issued 160,000 additional shares. We issued them at 11 and 15. 160,000 um, shares multiply that by 11 rand 51 cents will give us share capital amount. And our share capital amount in this case will be 1,841,600. Then we bought back the shares. Note that when we buy back the shares, since the issuing increases the number of shares issued, the buying back will decrease the number of shares issued. We're gonna take this 50,000 and take them to the reserve. So our reserves will go, will go up. Um, uh, however, share capital issued will decrease. Remember I said share capital will increase and decrease at original price. So in this case, we have to calculate that original price. All right, now in this case, the buyback price um, is 16 rand. Don't make a mistake of putting the buyback price in your ordinary share capital note. Here, you only put in the original cost at which you bought back the shares. Now, if that's what I'm going to say, buying back the shares at, but we don't know what the average price is. So we have to calculate it using the formula that I gave you earlier on. So we're going to look at the shares that were issued before the buyback. So when you look at the shares that were issued before the buyback are simply these shares here, which is that um, 
190,000 and 160. And the related share capital to that will be 5,848,000 as well as 1,841,000. So these two amounts will be divided for us to get the original price of the shares. Note that in that 5,848,000, we might have issued um, some of the shares 10 years ago. Okay, so we don't know when there were issues. Some are in there, but we know that um, they made a total capital amount of 5,848,000 up to the 1st of March, 2017, before we issued the new one. We know the cost of the new one, but we have to find the average cost price because we have issued more shares previously um, at different amounts. And I said to you, the mean is the accurate estimation. That is why we're gonna have to take our share capital before the buyback, divided by the number of shares before the buyback. Please round this off to two decimal places. Round your average price per share to two decimal places. That'll give us 11,83. Now it means that the shares were bought back at 11,83. This is considered to be the original cost price of the shares and that will reduce our share capital amount. That's why we put that 591,000 500 in brackets. So our number of shares have decreased by 50,000 to 600,000. And our share capital has also decreased by 591,500 to, um, to 7,098,100. When you calculate the average price of shares at the end of the year, um, by taking the 7,098,100, by dividing that by 600,000, it'll give you uh, the same amount as the average price that you got when you calculated uh, the buyback of shares. Guys, pay attention to this, because sometimes I won't give you uh, the buyback price. I will simply tell you that the average, I won't give you the buyback price, I won't give you the average at the end of the year. But if the last transaction was the buyback, please note that the average price of the shares will be the same as the buyback if the last transaction was the buyback. If we bought back shares and we issued shares later on, then the average price at the end of the year will not be the same as the average price um, before the buyback or at the buyback date, all right? Um, and I will simply give you uh, the remaining shares and I will give you closing balance of um, share capital at the end of the year. And then I won't tell you what uh, the buyback price, um, the average price, that we use to calculate the original cost of shares bought back. You might have to calculate that by taking the closing balance, dividing it by the number of shares that we issued. This only happens if the buyback of shares was the last transaction, as I have said. I prefer to use this table, okay? This table, I normally ask my student to prepare it before they even record anything because this table breaks everything down. So I will start with an account that will be affected, share capital. Share capital account, remember I just said to you, share capital account will always increase and decrease at cost price. Due to the buyback, the cost price of the buyback was 11.83, which is the average price per share. The value will simply be 50,000 because we bought back 50,000 shares multiplied by, by that 11.83. It'll simply give us that 591,500. And this amount will be recorded in the ordinary share capital note and we'll write it in brackets because it reduces the number of shares that were issued. Another account that will be affected will be bank. Bank will be negatively affected because it will go down. It'll go down by the buyback price, which is the market value of those shares at the date of the buyback. And that will be 16 rand. We're gonna put that in brackets because it will result in the cash outflow. The value of the buyback or the value, the total amount of money that went out of the business bank account will be 50,000 multiplied by 16 rand. And that will simply give us six, uh, well, 800,000. That 800,000 rand, we normally deduct it from our bank or we'll simply record it as a cash outflow in the statement of cash flow. You will do that shortly, okay? Not long from now. 
Another account that will be affected will be retained income. In retained income, we record any profits or loss that we made from the buyback. You can tell from this that we actually made a loss because we paid more than what we initially received for the buyback. Initially, the accurate estimate of what we initially received for the buyback was 11 rand 83, but we paid 16 rand. So we paid, so we returned more money to the shareholders than what we got from the shareholders. Therefore, we made a loss. And that loss will be four rand seventeen um, cents. How did I get that four rand seventeen cents? You just take eleven rand, which is your average price per share, minus the buyback price. It will give you four rand seventeen. That loss will go straight to retained income, and it will reduce the value of your retained income. Don't make a mistake of reporting this loss in the statement of profit or loss because this is not from normal operations. It's a transaction. It's a loss that we incurred due to the transaction between the company and the shareholder. Any losses or profits um, made or incurred between, um, well, in transactions that are between the company and the shareholders, you take them straight to owner's equity because all of those have to do with the owners of the company. So they do not go to your statement of profit or loss. This will be taken to the uh, retained income note that you will do uh, not long from now. Now, this is uh, simply the notes where I'm simply explaining what will happen to each of those accounts, okay? If you start with this table, you should never go wrong because it tells you what to do with each amount of uh, money um, that you got or you calculated from the buyback. It tells you that uh, your share capital will decrease by that five, nine, one, five hundred. Your bank will decrease by 800,000 and your retained income will increase by 208,500, okay? Uh, please try out this exercise and check out the next video. Uh, try your utmost best to make sure that you nail that exercise. Please subscribe and like and comment or ask questions if you have any.